guys, Claire here. In today's video, we're going to talk about all things Harry and Meghan. So there have been stories saying that Harry and Meghan are in their flop era. So let's look at all the things they've been up to since walking away from the firm. The Me You Can't See, executive produced by Harry and Oprah, was one of the top premiering shows in the UK for Apple TV. The Bench by Meghan Markle was the New York Times number one bestseller. Doesn't sound like a flop to me, but what do I know? Let's not forget Archetypes with Meghan that beat Joe Rogan and was number one across the globe in so many different countries. Not to mention it won the People's Choice Awards for the Pub Podcast of 2022. Now, what about Spare, which broke all sorts of records, was number one on Amazon and the indie bestsellers list. Of course, it was on the New York Times bestsellers list for months. And correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't it break the Guinness World Record for the fastest selling nonfiction book? I don't know. Sounds like anything but a flop to me. Archwell also produced Live to Lead, which did pretty good on Netflix. Not to mention Harry and Meghan's documentary, self-titled Harry and Meghan, which was number one on numerous countries across the globe and within the top three, four weeks after its release. And it also had 2.4 million viewers in its first episode, making it Netflix's biggest documentary for the year. Not to mention Harry and Meghan making the Times most influential people's list and cover. Flop? Not you guys tell me. Harry and Meghan being so heavily involved in Global Citizen, pushing for vaccine equity. Harry and Meghan also won the NAACP President's Award which is a huge deal. And not only did they win the award for the AACP, they also created a different award and grant for others, which of course, service is universal. So there's that. Now, Megan also signed with WME, which is one of the most powerful agencies in Hollywood. Along with their work for vaccine equity with the UN, Harry and Meghan also, well, Harry also delivered the keynote speech for Mandela Day at the UN, which is huge. Not to mention Prince Harry sent a charity, which has raised at least a million dollars in funds on an annual basis since leaving. Also, the partnership between Ving and Archwell, giving out million dollar worth of thousand dollar grants to women in need. That's pretty spectacular and it doesn't sound like a fail to me. Not to mention Harry and Meghan being awarded for a lot of their philanthropic work. Let's not forget that Archwell, in collaboration with Kaboom, created a beautiful playground for the kids in Uvalde, Texas, after that horrible, horrible event. Let's not forget Harry and Meghan's long-standing relationship with the World Central Kitchen, um, working with them on different projects all across the globe. Also, Meghan being a part of the World Central Kitchen cookbook. Not to mention their most current production, Heart of Invictus, currently released on Netflix. And let's not forget Travelist, which has created partnerships with some of the top names in the travel industry, such as TripAdvisor, Expedia, Google, some of the most incredible names when it comes to travel and sustainable travel in particular. Not to mention Harry and Meghan's Archwell Foundation outshining the Obama and Clinton Foundations in its first year. Not that it's a competition. The Obama's Foundation spent about $1.9 million, while the Clinton spent $2.9 million. Harry and Meghan's Archwell spent over $3 million in grants to various different organizations for vaccine equity, relief centers, refugee settlements, and building a better online world. Does that sound like a flop to you?
mentioned the two million dollars in grant money for responsible tech that harry and megan just recently gave away or the fact that the r12 team gave away so many presents and necessities to refugee families over the holidays or the fact that megan donated damages from her tabloid win to anti-bullying charities so yeah and these aren't all of the things that Harry and Meghan has been up to. They've done a lot more, but that's just the tip of the iceberg. So you guys tell me, is it a flop or not? Imagine going out your front door and all you have to do to stimulate a conversation is drink a bottle of fancy water. I'm just saying, irrelevant? I think not. Okay, here we go. Last book you read. Well, right now I'm reading Spare by Prince Harry. So I think that counts. The way that the royal family, palace experts, and the British media are treating Harry and Meghan like an ex that they can't get over, it's really something. I've been away this week, but that hasn't stopped me from like seeing a series of headlines come through. I didn't really dive too deep into any of the stories because they were all palace expert like exclusives read that as fake news. But it truly was kind of a bizarre week for royal reporting. Kind of started here a few weeks back with reports that Kate was calling Harry late at night to show him support and like try and extend an olive branch. The media was allowed to run with this story for a little while. This was apparently the angle that Kate Middleton was trying to be a peacemaker, mend fences. Maybe this was a little bit of image rehab after all those stories that made her sound like a bitter old crone after the queen passed away. You know, the ones about her blaming Meghan for making it so no wives could go to the queen's deathbed. But apparently that was not, we didn't want to rehab Kate it's like bitter image. We replaced that story with, ah, oh, she's thrown up her hands. She's not making those late night calls after all. This was followed by like Prince William becoming the focal point of these stories. The blame got placed on him as to why those late night calls weren't happening because apparently Prince William's bitterness is still so large that Prince Harry like is persona non grata still. Then we bumped things up a level saying that no, actually King Charles does want to have peace talks with Prince Harry. They were allowed to run with this story for a few days until another royal expert claimed that no, those peace talks are a long way off. I just, this is the problem with listening to royal experts, palace sources. They don't know jack shit. When there is a genuine palace brief, palace leak, you can usually tell and it is usually like kind of thoroughly reported. These stories, these are not it. Why are these stories it's so prevalent in the media right now? The answer is in the subheader right here. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex will attend the Invictus Games in Dusseldorf in September. That's the 11th through the 16th of September. Harry is also going to be at the Wellchild Awards in London on September 7th. We will return to this in just a moment. Harry and Meghan are gonna be on the scene again very shortly. And it has been demonstrated to the media that they get the clicks. So we're kind of ramping up now in the press. And like, look, I get it. Whenever I get a chance to talk about Harry and Meghan on my page, I do it because it is good for views and engagement. But I don't make stuff up to do that. Whether it's people talking about the divorce rumors, claiming that there's like lawsuits, settlements in place, or weird garbage stories like this, this is all just to kind of hop on the bandwagon and get people clicking on your stories or liking your videos. Here is the angle that we have finally arrived at ahead of Prince Harry in particular appearing in the UK that William and Kate are irritated by the fact that he is appearing so close to the anniversary of the Queen's death. Queen Elizabeth passed away last year on September 8th. Harry will be at the Wellchild Awards in London on September 7th. The media angle here is so transparent. Make it seem like Harry is like spurning the royal family, commemorating Queen Elizabeth by instead going to one of his own patronages and grabbing all the attention. Harry's been patron of Wellchild for 15 years. I think he's been going to the awards for about a decade. And you might remember that last year, he and Meghan had to cancel their appearance at the awards because it also fell really close to the day that the queen actually died. This is not anything new for his calendar. It's not like he's popped this in as a surprise appearance or as a gotcha to the royal family. But if you're writing quick snappy headlines to try and grab the general public's attention and outrage, that's an easy angle to take. So expect some appearances from these two in the next couple weeks, but also prepare yourself for this press coverage to get no less deranged during that time. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, hit that notification bell.